leaders are the mavericks. You know what a maverick is? That's the one that breaks away from the herd and does something different and blazes their own trail and has a machete and they're cutting their way through the wilderness, right? That's not a leader. That's a knucklehead. <laughs> wow. Leaders, how do you become a great leader? Follow. You have to follow. And you follow the system. How do you follow the system? Stand up. Brownie points. Stay in your lane. It's right here on my sheet. Give him a round of applause. Now here's where I'm going to throw everybody off. Andre, you remember at a meeting we did a few years ago when we did a little illustration, uh, corporate America leadership versus, at the time it was FDI leadership, and we had everybody dance. And do you guys know what square dancing is? Yeah. 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 Square dancing is like corporate America leadership. <laughs> oh my God. You've got a handful of people with skills, okay, and you got some knucklehead who probably couldn't dance his way out of a paper bag <laughs> up on stage. Yell and tell everybody what to do. Right? right? Yeah. That's wow. corporate America leadership. That wow. guy was appointed that position, and he's not doing anything. You notice he's not dancing. <laughs> he's just standing there, you know, hold your partner, do -si do and round around, yeah. yeah. whatever they do. <laughs> and if you don't have skills in that system, you don't do well. Right. Because you got to have skills to be one of those dancers. So you end up with a big crowd of people doing nothing. A handful of people dancing, and one guy be telling everybody what to do. That's corporate America leadership, and that's what we think leadership is. Leadership and longevity works differently. Leadership and longevity is so good. If it was a dance, even I could do it. Has anybody ever been in a conga line? Yeah. Oh, conga line's awesome. Because even I can look good in a conga line. Because I've got somebody in front of me showing me what to do, and I've got somebody behind me making sure I do it. <laughs> right? Right. Now, here's the cool thing about a conga line. Now, we took this whole room. There's probably seven, 800 people in this room. We transformed the entire room in less than 30 seconds into one giant conga line. Now, that's the good news. Is the bad news, somebody in the middle of that conga line got in management mode, Oh, and they no. sat down. What happened to the rest of that entire conga line? They all sat down. Because leadership is about following. So when you're running your business, you better be pretending like you're in a conga line because you've got someone to follow and you've got somebody behind you that you're leading. And your role is critical. Because if you sit down, what happens? Everyone sits down. Wow. Now, here's the first rule of being a leader. Knowing when to say yes will make you a living. Knowing when to say no will make you a fortune. We're also brainwashed by corporate America to think that sales, that growth, that getting people on your team is about saying yes. Because yes is positive. We're taught to be positive. As a leader, you got to learn to say no. And think about a compass. Everybody knows what a compass is. How many degrees are there in a compass? 360 degrees. You've only got one direction to go in. That means there's one yes. And 359 no's. Your job as a leader is to keep people in their lane. And there's 359 ways out of the lane, and there's only one way in the lane. So how many more times are you going to say no than you are going to say yes? A lot. In fact, it's the hardest thing you will do as a leader is to say no. When somebody says, hey, I've got a new product, what's your answer? No. no. Hey, I've got a new way of getting leads. No. no. Hey, I want to go get this uh, athlete uh, group over here. 
Yeah. I've got the uh, the uh, uh, the Southern uh, Association of uh, <laughs> Broke Drunk People that. Uh, no. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't have to do with your conga line, the answer is no. no. Mm. Steve Jobs said, when asked about focus, he said, people think that focus means that you have to stay focused on the thing you're supposed to focus on. <laughs> right? Isn't that what focus is? I say focus on this. He says, what it really means is saying no to the thousand other good ideas that there are. He says, we're as equally proud of the things we haven't done as the things we have done. True innovation is saying no to a thousand good ideas. Now that's almost word for word. What did Steve Jobs do? He only changed the world yes. with the iPhone. Because he knew how to say no to everything that wasn't taking him in the right direction. Ask any great leader. Another good one, Margaret Thatcher. She said, being a leader is a lot like being a lady. If you have to run around town telling everyone that you are one, you're probably not. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I'm going to finish with this. That's crazy. What's the difference between the wealthy and the non wealthy mindset? Entertainment. We've been taught by corporate America that money is a limited resource. In fact, it's in our face every single day. Money is a limited resource. Money is a limited resource. Money is a limited resource. In fact, it's so precious that you trade your time for it, right? It's getting back to what we talked about in the beginning. The wealthy know that money is an unlimited resource. And that time is a limited resource. That's why you need to say no more than you say yes. Oprah Winfrey has a staff of people that run block for her all the time. Not because she's not approachable, not because she's not a good person, not because she's a hermit, because she doesn't want her time wasted. She only has 24 hours in a day. She pays people hundreds of thousands of dollars to prevent other people from wasting their time. Here we go out there and we spend our time like it's meaningless. There's no such thing as spending money. The only thing you truly have to spend is time. If I asked, who's ever run out of money before? Come on, I'll be honest. Manage to go get more? Yes. You know, anything that you can run completely out of and you can go get more, it must be unlimited. <laughs> Who's ever run out of time? <laughs> no, you haven't. Yeah. 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 Let me ask you different. Let me ask you differently. How much time do you have left? Unlimited. <laughs> now, the funny thing is. Why would you value something that you can go get more of anytime you want, yet the one thing that you have no idea how much you have left, you can waste it. That's true. That's true. See ya! <laughs> <laughs> we, it's, it's a funny thing. We all have. We all think we have the same amount left, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you, we find out with a family as large as ours, we find out all too often how precious time is. Because it could be gone like that. And once you're out, you're out. So change your mindset. Realize that if you're not 100% engaged, 
you're wasting valuable time. Because everyone that's following you in the conga line of your business is going to do what you do. And if you're not a good follower, you can never be a good leader. Say that. If you're not, Bill Andrioli is a great leader. Why? Because he's a great follower. 